Welcome to Wildcraft Dying. On this week's episode, I'm going to show you how to die with a bolete mushroom, specifically Zeller's Boletus. Come join us. Bolete mushrooms refer to any mushroom in the Boletus genus, which at the moment is about 300 different species. Now, they're characterized by the cap being distinct from the stem and the undersurface of the cap being fleshy uh, with pores. Now, not to say that every mushroom that has pores is a bolete. Now, boletes are found all over the world in North America and mainly Europe, including Spain and the Mediterranean. Um, what you're looking for is a mushroom where the pores are yellow like this. It's the yellow pores that we're gonna separate and use as a dye. These specific boletes are known as Zeller's bolete or Zerocomella zelleri, which are found here in Western British Columbia. They have a maroon to black cap, yellow stem with red streaks and yellow pores that can bruise. I don't see a mushroom here. Yeah? I, wait, do you want to go check it out? I think I, sure, let's get, check it out. I think I see a black mushroom. I think Whoa, I see a black, black mushroom. Under the leaf. Now, even amongst the yellow pore dyers, um, some will dye more brightly than others. The porcini or the boletus edulis is often a very bright yellow, so you'll need to experiment a little bit. But once you've got them home, uh, you want to separate the pores from the cap. The cap is really just white flesh, and it can wick up the dye. So you'll want to separate it. Um, and here, that's exactly what I'm doing. And once you've separated it, you have a few options. If you're not quite ready to move forward with dyeing, you can absolutely freeze them in a oh, freeze them in the freezer or use a dehydrator. So if you're using them fresh, you're going to want a 10 to 1 ratio, which means that for every, let's say, pound of fiber you want to dye, you want 10 pounds of the flesh because there is still a lot of moisture within that and that adds to the weight. Once you have if you've dehydrated them, that goes down more to a two to one ratio. So two pounds of dry pores to one pound of fiber. But the first step is of course to separate it out. You're welcome to use gloves if this really isn't your jam. And um, it's actually quite easy uh, once you get used to it. It's almost like pulling apart a, a donut that has two different sides, or maybe that's more like a bagel. Um, and it doesn't need to be pretty. It's really just doing your best to get rid of the white so that when you're using those weight ratios I talked about, it's pores, not mushroom surface, just strictly those pores that have those spores inside. So once your pores are weighed out, as you can see, I got 145 grams. Um, I'm going to weigh out my fiber. And here I'm just trying to get to sort of maintain that 10 to 1. So I'm looking at about 15 grams. And that's a good starting point to get a dark color. If I wanted to go lighter, I wouldn't worry about that quite as much. But here I'm weighing out, trying to aim for about that 10 to 1 ratio. Now, whenever you're dyeing, you wanna make sure that the vessel that you're dyeing with fits the amount of fiber that you have. And if you have a smaller amount of fiber, um, you might wanna think about going the jar route. So this is a bag I use in a lot of my videos. You don't need to use it, um, but I really like it. So this is a paint bag. You get them at the paint store. It's for filtering paint, but it's actually really great for dyeing. It means you don't have to worry about pouring or filtering later on. So here I am, this is the one gallon size. They also come in five gallon size. So here I am, I'm gonna fill the bag with those pores. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about breaking them up because once they're cooked, they just kind of become goo anyway. So sort of just shove them in, you're doing great. And then I'm gonna actually use it in a jar. Uh, just off screen, you can kind of see that jar. That is a half gallon or a two liter jar. Um, and then I'm gonna use the double boiler method, almost like you would use for making, for cooking chocolate. Um, and what that that does is it means that it's going to go into the jar and the jar is going to go into a pot with water um, and that way I'm really creating a very concentrated dye pot. 
So as usual, even though this is an edible mushroom, we still wanna make sure that we're separating our cooking vessels from our dyeing vessels. So the pot that you're seeing is only ever used for dyeing. I'm gonna fill it up and I'm gonna fill the jar this can be with warm or hot water. And then I'm gonna take it over to the stove. Um, I usually fill the jar maybe about three quarters full. Um, it tends to evaporate quite quickly in the smaller jar. And then I'm going to fill the pot uh, so the water is basically the same level. Um, and then I'll take it over to the stove for cooking. And here I'm just giving it an extra stir, just trying to break it up a little bit and make sure that all that water is going to seep into those mushrooms uh, to maximize the dye. Once we're finished adding our water, all we need to do now is pick it up and take it over to the stove. And as you can partially see, those mushrooms are starting to dissolve. We also returned the extra mushrooms back for the squirrels. And at this stage, it's on the stove and we're gonna simmer it for one hour. Let's talk mordanting for a second. Um, what I'm not showing in this video is that this fiber has been introduced to a dissolved metal um, ahead of time. The white wool there has been introduced to alum or aluminum potassium sulfate. And this darker tan one has been introduced to dissolved iron in the form of ferrous sulfate. Both of those steps at Ariel are covered in another video I did on acorns. I'll put a link in the description below um, and you can follow those steps. It's really the same steps in most of my videos, so I try not to be too repetitive. Um, but regardless, once your dye material is simmering on the stove, uh, you can start soaking your fiber. You wanna soak it in warm water for about 20 minutes to an hour and then rinse it out. When you add damp fiber into the pot, it really allows it to sink in and dye more evenly. At this stage, our hour is up and it's time to remove the bag. As you can see, our pores are now basically goop that can go straight into your composter. Give it a little bit of a squeeze. Try to make sure you're getting all of those juices out. And now because we use that smaller jar and you can see the use of the bag is great, you're just gonna pull it out. Now our dye pot is absolutely ready to go, it's super concentrated. Now that fiber, which is already damp, give it a squeeze and now add it in. And as you can see, it just soaks right in. And now you're just gonna heat it back up again for another hour. Now, if you're using a larger amount of fiber, one thing to keep in mind is, is temperature. You never want to shock your fiber. So making sure that you are cooling slowly, heating slowly, um, and not doing a big temperature shift with the fiber is how you're gonna maintain its luster and make it so it's not gonna felt on you. Now, the other thing I do with the bag is I'll often add it back on top um, just so it's sitting and that helps push the fiber so it's all under the surface and gives it a little bit of extra exposure to the dye. Now, one thing I didn't talk about is why I did two different colors of fiber. Um, in terms of the mordants. You use different mordants to get different colors out of the fiber. That iron, that darker one, should go quite a bit darker when it, everything is said and done. Um, at this stage, I just like to check on the fiber every sort of 15 minutes or so, and I'm gonna let it uh, heat for the hour and then leave it overnight. Okay, well, it's the next morning. Um, it is now cooled overnight, and I am always excited to see how evenly the color took, how dark it went. Um, and so this is always like the really exciting part for me is having a look at what we got. Um, so you're not worried, or at this stage, because we've left it overnight, it is very, very cool. I tend to pour it out and let's have a look. Um, so the, um, the color didn't come through super well on the camera, but it's a beautiful golden yellow. Um, the other thing I could mention too is when you're dyeing with mushrooms for yellow, including bolites, you can add a tablespoon of vinegar and that gives it an extra sort of golden tone. I don't know if I showed that on video, but you can definitely add a little bit of vinegar as well. Um, and so you got a beautiful yellow and the iron did not go super dark. Now, some mushrooms with iron mordanted wool will give you more of an olive green. Um, this one uh, did not it gave it much more of a brown but they're actually two quite lovely colors and i was really happy with it so here is a beautiful way to celebrate autumn and um, get some lovely fall colors i hope this video was useful please like and subscribe for future videos on how we dye with mushrooms lichens and plants